Hello, and welcome to Bolt Action Reloading. In today's video, we'll be discussing the performance of nine different small rifle primers and 6.5 Creedmoor. Stick around. Welcome back to the channel. If this is your first time here and you'd like to see how I and the rest of me here make our group smaller, start now by subscribing to the channel and hitting the bell icon. That way you'll get notified when I post new videos and you won't miss anything. Guys, in today's video, we'll be once again visiting the subject of primers. Some of you may be tired, but I found this to be a very interesting topic, and I have used the results of this test to decide which particular components I pick for my reloads. That out of the way, most of the components you see on the table before you are components we've tested previously, with a couple different exceptions. If you'd like to see where I started from, I'll put a card up and you guys can go check the previous small rifle primer test that I ran. Keeping in mind that, that test was actually performed on Lapo Brass, and today we're using a different type. I actually have two different videos going up in conjunction with this, so so some of this will be redundant. I'm not sure which one I'm going to get done first, so if some of this information you've seen before, I apologize, but I think it's important nonetheless. First, let's start off talking a little bit about our test platform, the Ruger Precision Rifle Generation 1, and it's chambered in 6.5 Creedmoor. If you'd like to know more specifics about it, I'll put it in the description box below, but that is our test platform for today. Our favorite projectiles we've been able to get very consistent results with is this 140 grain ELD match by Hornady, part number 26331. One of our standard match loads we've been able to use is 41.3 grains of H4350. The cartridge overall length we're loading to is 2.852 inches. And if you guys are familiar with this load, we've shot it several times on this channel. It was actually given to me by one of my subscribers and it has worked very well in my rifle. Now, keeping in mind we don't throw any particular load in any new brass without looking at some information first. Keeping in mind with our test data today, this test was actually used to fire form our brass. It is very close to max charge, though I'm not saying it's over pressure in any way, shape, or form. The case volume measurement that I took was very close to the Lapo brass, and so I felt it was very likely safe in our rifle, and that's why I loaded the what I did. You guys may have already noticed that there's actually one primer missing from one of our pieces of brass. Rest assured, guys, that was not because of pressure. That was because I popped it out, and I was taking case volume measurement after I had fired it, and I needed to be able to remove the primer to do so. Getting right into the data, in case you guys are interested, the conditions were 84 degrees Fahrenheit, 28.83 inches of mercury, 69% relative humidity with a density altitude of 3,204 feet. Actually, a relatively windy day at 7 to 8 mile an hour crosswinds. You can see all the primers were used before you and they'll be on the screen, so I'm not going to bother to list them out. We'll start going over our results. I will warn you in advance that I'm probably going to offend everybody because for all the information, I've actually produced both the best four and five shot groups that we can get out of what we shot. And because I like to make mistakes right out of the gate, I will say that I forgot to actually warm up the rifle before I started shooting today. And so I'm going to cut the CCI 450 a little bit of slack. It was the warm up shot that goofed up that group as well as over opened up the extreme spread and standard deviation on that group. So, I apologize in advance for being silly, but I couldn't take it back after I'd started. So, getting right into the groups, the CCI 450, our average velocity was 2644, but if you'd like to delete that other shot, was 2641. Like I said, the standard deviation would have been 9.5, including all five shots, 6.8 without, extreme spread of 26 or 16. The four shot group was a beautiful 0.331 MOA, five shot group not quite so pretty with 1.384 MOA. No other specific mistakes that I'm going to call out today. For the Fed 205 Match AR Rifle Primer, 2640 was the average velocity, standard deviation of 5.4 with an extreme spread of 15, a 4-shot group of 0 0.490, and a 5-shot group of 0.818 MOA. Moving on to the Winchester Small Rifle Primer, the average velocity was 2644, standard deviation of 4.6 with an extreme spread of 12, a 4-shot 0.399 MOA group, or a 5-shot 0.622 MOA group. Moving on to the CCI BR4, our average velocity was again 2644 feet per second. Standard deviation crept up slightly to 6.4. Extreme spread of 17. A four shot group of 0.211 MOA and a five shot group of 0.459 MOA. The Remington 7.5 BR, you guys will notice later that we actually had some primer cratering here, which would have varied the statistics slightly. Believe it or not, the more primer cratering we had, it actually slightly lowered the velocity. But again, only minor. The average velocity would have been 2650 or 2652. Um, standard deviation is either 7.3, 7.2, doesn't really matter. Extreme spread of 17 or 15. Four shot group of 0 0.400 and a five shot group of 0.799 MOA. Moving on to the S&B primer, 
2651 was our average velocity, standard deviation of 5.8, extreme spread of 13, four shot group of 0.447 MOA, and a five shot group of 0.715 MOA. Moving on to the CCI 400, average velocity was 2649, standard deviation of 6.4, extreme spread of 18, four shot group of 0.668 MOA, and a five shot group of 0.818 MOA. Moving on to one of my channel favorites, the Fed 205M, back down to 2641 feet per second, standard deviation of 5.7, extreme spread of 16, four shot group of 0.277 MOA, and a five shot group of 0.644 MOA. Now a newcomer to our testing, some of the very first shots we've taken. We're actually going to have the next two groups are both CCI 41. So the first five shot group averaged 2648 feet per second, standard deviation of 5.5, extreme spread of 15, a four shot 0.252 MOA group, and a five shot 0.372 MOA group. The second CCI 41 group would have been 2644 feet per second, slightly lower, standard deviation of only two, extreme spread of five, a four shot 0.493 MOA group, or a five shot 0.619 MOA group. If you guys would like to look at that combined, the actual both CCI 41s, if you do all 10, would have been 2646, standard deviation of 4.47, and an extreme spread of 15. Certainly not too shabby for its first appearance on the channel. So guys, I know that was a lot of data. I hope you guys pause it to see anything that you wanted to see. Go back and look at everything to your heart's content. I did think this was a very interesting test. Most interesting point, this was our, like I said before, our fire forming of the Peterson Brass. So it's initial firing. Excluding literally our first shot of the day, we couldn't find one group that was above one MOA. Looking at strictly four shot groups, our worst was 0.668 MOA, which I will take any day of the week. And again, excluding that one shot, all the five shot groups of Lars was 0.818 MOA. So all in all, I do think this was a spectacular day of shooting. One thing I also thought was interesting, if you actually take all the velocities and average them, the average velocity for all the loads tested today, so all 50 shots, regardless of primer, the average velocity was 2645, the standard deviation would have been 6.72 with an extreme spread of 29. Now, extreme spread of 29 isn't real good, but keeping in mind, literally, there are nine different primer brands on the table that we tested today. And honestly, guys, when push comes to shove above everything, I really think this is a testament to the brass quality. You guys might not draw the same conclusions, but everyone's entitled to their opinion. Keep in mind, the reason why I picked this particular load was we've had good luck with in the past, and not that I expected any different today, I certainly didn't expect results as good as these. Certainly one thing to keep in mind is what the primers actually look like. I'll put a shot of that on the screen and you guys can take a look. Obviously going from left to right, you'll see that the brass is labeled. Some of the primers tended to crater more than others. The Remington 7.5 BR actually has the most cratering out of all the different options that we have on here. The CCI BR4 certainly showed well today, as did the Fed 205. Honestly, I really couldn't necessarily pick a bad primer out of the bunch. Looking straight at statistics, you can see that the CCI 41 very well may be one of my go-to primers. The data is what the data is. I hope you guys find it useful. Well, whether I tested your favorite primer today or not, I really hope you guys enjoyed today's video. If you have any comments or questions, please post those in the comment section below. If you're not subscribed to the channel, what are you waiting for? Hit that subscribe button, turn the bell notification on so you don't miss next week's video. And until then, stay safe in small groups.